Hello, I'm Jake Tapper in Washington, where the state of our union is frankly stunned watching the leading Republican presidential candidate, Donald Trump, quote one of our nation's foremost adversaries, Vladimir Putin, as a sort of character witness while on the stump in New Hampshire last night. Vladimir Putin of Russia says that Biden's, and this is a quote, politically motivated persecution of his political rival is very good for Russia because it shows the rottenness of the American political system, which cannot pretend to teach others about democracy. One might think such a point need not be made, but Vladimir Putin, a former KGB official with blood on his hands, who regularly sides with American adversaries, both rhetorically and with arms, and who right now has at least two Americans, Evan Gershkovich and Paul Whelan, unjustly detained, Vladimir Putin is not a credible source of information about American democracy, much less American jurisprudence. Vladimir Putin seeks to undermine the United States and its allies, whether in Europe or Asia or the Middle East. And yet, despite this, or maybe by now because of it, I can no longer tell, Mr. Trump stands poised to do very well in the Republican Iowa caucuses on January 15th in less than a month. He has only expanded his lead. Doug, I mean, I'm sorry, but that's just empirically stunning, uh, you know, for any major presidential candidate to be quoting approvingly Vladimir Putin smearing American democracy. I don't care if it's Joe Biden, Hillary Clinton, or Donald Trump. It's absolutely stunning. It, it's stunning, but it's not surprising because we've seen Trump do this time and time again. This isn't new news with Donald Trump. It's just the latest iteration of what strongman he wants to connect him to. But while this is Trump echoing Putin, it's not clear that this is really echoing throughout the country. You know, we, we see these clips, people absorb them, and then they go out and they buy a sandwich. And that sandwich is $15 now when it used to be $9.75 before COVID. Everything that Americans are spending money on is more expensive today, or they're not spending money because they can't afford the financing for a car or a house. And at the same time, we have the CBS poll that shows that just 7% think that Joe Biden has the strength and stamina to, to be president. I think that's what voters are reacting to. It's why Trump is leading in these polls, despite what he's been saying in campaign rallies throughout the country. Reality check there from Doug, Karen. Well, okay, but I think it's a bit un-American for a former president to be lauding a dictator who Don't disagree. is holding two Americans. And in the context of a presidential contest, A, when we are seeing actually economic numbers moving in a more positive direction, we'll see how that, if that holds, I do think this matters to Americans. I do think it, people would qu will question, particularly when it is a binary choice, who is it? I mean, that kind of talk is actually also bad for the American economy. That's not going to make markets feel particularly confident. That's not going to help bring costs down. That's not a person who has an agenda for trying to bring costs <coughs> down. So I completely agree with the economic concerns. But again, the presidential election becomes who of these two men cares about me and is actually going to try to make my life better? I don't think the guy quoting Putin All is the one All of that means that Joe Biden should be up by 15 points then, and he's not. And you look at, you drill down in the states, Michigan, North Carolina, Arizona, Trump's doing very well. But let's show, he is, but let's show this brand new uh, CBS News poll out of New Hampshire, uh, which actually has some good news uh, for one of Donald Trump's challengers, Nikki Haley. Uh, Donald Trump at 44%, Nikki Haley uh, the ambassador and former South Carolina governor, 29%, DeSantis 11, Christy 10, Ramaswamy 5, Hutchinson 1. Um, and, and as you know, uh, David Urban, in polling, it's not necessarily where your numbers are, but where they're going. And Donald Trump is basically flat, and Nikki Haley is ascendant. I mean, 15 points is surmount. I mean, she can overcome that theoretically. It's huge, but it's, it's, it's where she's going to have to finish, right? She's not going to be able to finish in the in the in the mid teens or high teens. You got to get in these twenties and thirty, you know, high twenties. She's twenty nine. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So high twenties, all of a sudden you become credible. Yeah. Right. People start paying attention. They'll start tuning in. Your point, fifteen is is a is a is a, is a number you can close on moving forward. But you're going to have to see that also. What's going to happen in Iowa be, before that, right? Is, is are those numbers going to then change again? Because if she gets crushed in Iowa and is, is buried in Iowa, are those numbers going to go back down again, right, in New Hampshire? So it's, this is, it's like a three-dimensional game of chess here, right? So we, we have to see what's going to happen on the 15th. She may do well. She may not do well. I mean, we saw yesterday the, uh, the, the, the DeSantis team continues to kind of unravel at the seams, right? The Jeff Rowe left, and they're having... The, so the pro, yeah, pro DeSantis yeah, super they're, PAC. They're having uh, this tumult, the they're having this tumult yeah. inside the campaign, and so they're kind of on a downward spiral, it seems. So maybe she's ascendant, and, and Iowa does out, out kicks her coverage there. 
and then that would that would be really good for her moving into New Hampshire. If she loses badly in, in Iowa, I'm not so sure it's going to matter much in New Hampshire. So it's not just uh, the media and uh, Trump's rivals uh, like Nikki Haley and Chris Christie that are criticizing him. Former Speaker of the House Paul Ryan said something, uh, some very stark criticism of Donald Trump that I've never heard him say publicly uh, quite as starkly before. Let's roll that. Trump's not a conservative. He's an authoritarian narcissist. He's a populist authoritarian narcissist. So historically speaking, all of his tendencies are, you know, basically where narcissism takes him, which is whatever makes him popular, or makes him feel good at any given moment. He thinks in, in an authoritarian way. And he's been able to get a, a, a big chunk of the Republican base to follow him because, you know, he's the culture warrior. Look, I mean, I'm glad. Welcome to the party, Paul Ryan. Where have you been <laughs> for so long? You know, before it was Donald Trump shouldn't run because he wasn't electable, not because he was an authoritarian, even after January 6th. So good. I'm glad more Republicans, including Paul Ryan, are starting to see the threat, you know, as we just were discussing him quoting Vladimir Putin. I guess my question, though, is I, I don't actually know if the Putin comments are going to impact Donald Trump or not. Because I think we're seeing more and more Americans become more and more extreme, particularly on the right. And the Republican and Party- some on the left, too. Some on the I left, yes, say. but we're talking about Trump now. Okay, so, okay. Um, but Republicans used to be, you know, against Russia. And now they're, they're the party that doesn't even want to support Ukraine and the war to fight against um, a dictator. So I hear you, Doug, about, you know, why isn't Joe Biden 15 points ahead? I don't think it's a comparison right now to Joe Biden and Donald Trump. Right now, we're we just <laughs> talked about Nikki Haley. He's still up above, uh, over Nikki Haley, over Ron DeSantis, over Vic Ramaswamy, over Chris Christie. So the party is moving in you, such you, a way you guys, that it's you guys just keep, you, guys, you guys just keep telling yourselves that. Keep whistling past the graveyard, ladies. I'm not, I'm not right. saying, no, first of all, I'm not saying Hold that. Up. David. Uh, okay, I'm not, <laughs> let me just be real clear. I'm not saying in a general election, if it's Trump against Trump, there will be some comparisons. But I'm saying right now, your party is actually having a primary, and the comparison is people who want to stand up against Russia want to stand up for democracy, and someone who doesn't, yeah. and your front runner is someone who doesn't. I think we all agree that Donald Trump, A, is likely to get the nomination, although anything could happen, and B, could very well be elected. I don't think there's anybody on this panel who disagrees Absolutely. with that.